What's up, welcome back. In the last episode, we did some planning. In this episode, we're gonna break ground on our new newsletter platform that enables users to make some money by writing emails and sending these newsletters out to their subscribers. The first thing we wanna do is set up authentication. So because we're using Ruby on Rails, we're gonna use the Devise gem. This is a really popular and common authentication mechanism for Rails. So we're actually gonna start by breaking ground with a new Rails application. We're gonna call it Newsletter Platform. We're gonna use Tailwind for CSS, ES Build for our JavaScript stuff, PostgreSQL for a database. We're gonna skip building out the tests and we wanna use the main branch today. Now this is gonna go out and download a bunch of dependencies and get things set up so that we have a brand new Rails app. While that's running, I'll show you that I'm using Rails version 7042 in Ruby. Right now we're on Ruby 3.2.1. So if you're watching way far in the future, things may have changed. If you are on an older version of Rails, things may have changed. But as those dependencies come down, let's talk a little bit about Devise. So Devise is relatively straightforward to get up and running. It requires that we install a new gem. This is actually like a full engine. So it's gonna include some controllers, some views, some mailers, and a bunch of stuff for authentication. So we're gonna add this gem to our gem file, and then we're gonna run this script that, or this generator called Rails G device colon install. That's gonna set up an initializer for us. It'll also set up some localization things, and then we're gonna need some to manually configure some of our application because it is just like a brand new Rails app so that it will work well with the full authentication system. All right, so let's jump into the newsletter platform here. We're gonna say bundle add device. That's gonna add the device gem. Then we can say bundle, or then we wanna say like Rails G model user. So we're gonna create a new, a brand new user model, and we just want to give them a name for now. So the user is just gonna be this simple model in the database that has a name. And again, our user is gonna represent both the author and the reader. So this generated two things for us, a new model class, a file that contains the class for our user model, and also a migration. This is our database migration. And right now we're saying to the database that we wanna create a new table called users. And for now, we'll just start with a name and some timestamps. And by default, we will also get a primary key ID. And that should be good to start. So we can say Rails DB create, DB migrate, that will create our database. And then it will also run this migration that we just saw. And that's gonna create a new table called users that just has that name inside. Let's also run this generator command for device. So Rails G device install. When you run this command, it's gonna spit out some settings that we might need to apply depending on your application's config. So inside of development RB, we want to open this up and drop in to the mailer section, this one liner that says, when you are constructing a URL, inside of the template for an email that's gonna be sent, use this domain and port for your fully qualified URLs. The next thing we wanna do is make sure that there is a root route. The way that I like to do this is by generating a controller called pages, and this is gonna be all of our different static pages, the main one being this root sort of landing page for the entire application, and then maybe also an about page or something. But for now, we'll just start with root. We can head over to our routes and make sure that we have this root to pages root. Okay, you'll notice also in this version of Rails, there's this brand new health checker tool, which is pretty neat. Okay, so we've got our root thing set up. That was the second step. The third step here is that we should add this to our application HTML ERB. So we'll jump into application HTML ERB layout, and we'll drop this right after the top of the body so that we have some messages about our authentication flow showing up in the UI. And finally, it's, it suggests like this optional step of generating device views. And we do want to do this because we're gonna customize that onboarding flow. So let's run Rails G device colon views. This is gonna generate and copy over a bunch of HTML ERB templates from the device gem so that we can edit them and customize them to our liking. So again, because we're going through this flow and we want to be able to have users sign up and enter their name and their email and a password, what we wanna do is we're gonna edit the screen for registering so that instead of just email and password, it also includes the name. So we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. The next step is once you have these device tools installed, you can generate a bunch of migrations and modifications to models 
that will enable divides for specific models. So if you had, for instance, a separate reader model and a separate author model, you might wanna generate divides for both readers and authors. Because we're gonna reuse the same user model and the authentication for the user model, we're just gonna say Rails G device user, and that will create a migration for us to add device to users. It'll also modify the user model here by making a call to device and setting up a bunch of different concerns or modules that are gonna be settings or configuration enabled on the user that are provided by the device gem. And finally, we're gonna add this device for users route, which is gonna add a bunch of different routes for like slash user slash sign up and slash user slash sign in, et cetera. So let's take a look at this migration. Instead of just running this by default, we wanna take a look and see what is going into our users table. So it's gonna add a bunch of different columns here by default. One is the email. That's really important, especially when we're a newsletter platform because we're gonna be sending emails. In that same vein, we can enable this confirmable functionality inside a device that will make sure that a user can, when they sign up, they will receive an email that they have to confirm to make sure that they are set up. We also do this trackable thing just so that we know when users are signing in, signing out, et cetera. Okay, we don't need them to be lockable. And now at the bottom here, we're gonna add an index to the users table on the email column, enforcing uniqueness at the database level. This is really nice because it avoids having duplicate users with the same email address. And because we are enabling confirmation, we want to make sure that we have this token in here and that is unique. This is gonna be the token embedded in the confirmation URL that is in the email sent to users when they first sign up so that they can click, yes, I am who I say I am, click the, e the link in the email, they're redirected to this confirmation flow and they are confirmed. All right, so we can say reels, db migrate, and this will run the migration and modify the user. So let's open up that user model. In addition to all of these sort of features of device, we also want to enable confirmable and trackable. Okay, so that should be a good start. Let's take a look at what this looks like by firing up our server. So we're gonna CD into newsletter platform. We'll run bin dev to start the server. Notice that bin dev is gonna start several different processes and they're like color coded here. This is really convenient. You'll notice that we have a web server. We've got our JS builds and our CSS builds that are all up and running. That's pretty nice. And you can see the output from all three of those different processes right here inside of this output. You'll notice that we are starting up this Puma server and that it's listening on port 3000. So we can actually just click on that. And here we see the landing page for our application. So this is pages, slash, or this is the root route. We're gonna come back here and build out a big, beautiful landing page using Tailwind UI. But for now, let's talk about how we're gonna sign up. So if we go to users slash sign up, slash users slash sign up, we get this page. Now notice we're receiving the email address and password and password confirmation, but we also want to collect the name. So what we can do is go back over to our application and open up app views device registrations. And this is for a new registration. We want to add a new field here at the top and the field is going to be for name. And instead of an email field, this is going to be a text field. We're going to autofocus this instead of the email address and it should autocomplete to name. We could do first name, last name, whatever, so that it's more personal when you send these newsletters, but whatever, we're just gonna say name and this should be fine. So now if we refresh the page, we see this name input. But if we tried to submit the form as it is now, strong parameters, which is a security feature of Rails and is part of device, is going to prevent the name from flowing down into the user model that is created as part of this registration flow. So there's a trick to doing this. And if we look inside of the readme for device and scroll down a bit, you'll find a section with this application controller and configuring permitted parameters. So let's talk about overriding our application controller to allow additional parameters to be passed when registering with our device controller. This is how we can enable that inside of our application controller. So I'm just gonna grab this before action and then this method configure permitted parameters. We'll go over to our application controller and drop that in. Now before action is a way to register a method that will be called every single time a controller action is called. And because all of our controllers are gonna inherit from application controller, we need to check if this is a device controller, then run this method. So if 
we are receiving a request that is related to users signing up or signing in or signing out or whatever, it will run this method. Now, this method is going to check and see, give us the device parameter sanitizer, which is going to use this like strong params thing. And this will allow us to permit specific keys. In this case, we want to allow the name to be passed in on signup. Okay, so that should be all that we need to do to allow the name to be passed on signup. So let's refresh the page here. We'll say, yes, we're signing up as Jenny Rosen, password, password, hit sign up, close. Okay, so a message with a confirmation link has been sent to your email address. Please follow the link to activate. Because we haven't like connected Rails to any email sender, this is all just happening locally. So there's a couple different ways we can view these emails locally. One is by just looking at the logs. So if we head over to the logs, we'll see this is our post request coming into slash users. We see the controller that handled this request. We can see that we passed in our name as Jenny Rose in the email, et cetera. And we can see what's being inserted into the database, this like actual SQL command. Finally, we see the controller that is being rendered for the mailer that will be sent as the confirmation email to the user. So if we scroll down just a little bit here, you'll notice that we have some confirmation instructions. We also have this URL that is going to be sent that has this confirm my account link. And in this URL, we have a special confirmation token. Recall that we enabled the index on the database level for this confirmation token to ensure uniqueness, but also to speed up the lookup of this confirmation. If we were to click on this link, that would confirm our account. But one thing that I wanted to note is inside of the mailer that's being sent, it says, welcome Jenny Rosen at example.com. So this is the email address of the user instead of the name. But since we have the name, we might as well send, we might as well say, welcome Jenny Rosen instead of their email address, right? So what I wanted to do before we get into the confirmation step is actually go and modify and override this template so that it uses the name. So let's find that template. We can go back over to views, device, mailer, confirmation instructions. This is the confirmation email that's being sent. So instead of saying welcome at email, we wanna say welcome at name. This instance variable is being set by the mailer that is using this template to send the email. And by default, when you say Rails G device views, it's not going to give you the device mailer. So what we need to do is instead create a new device mailer class, and we're going to inherit from device mailer. And I'll show you how to register this in the initializer so that it uses this mailer instead. So we're going to say class is device mailer, and this is going to inherit from device mailer. And we're going to talk about just the confirmation instructions method. Now, by default, it's going to receive a record. That is going to be the user model. The token is the confirmation token and then some options. And we can make sure that we're calling the confirmation instructions method on the device mailer by using this super method. But before we call super, we can also say at name and set this instance variable to record.name because this is always going to be a user and they should always have a name property. Okay. This is the first step to enable our sort of like override. The second step is to go into the initializers. So again, instead of config initializers devise, and in here, there is a mailer setting. This is the class that is responsible for sending emails. So instead of devise colon colon mailer, that's the default one. We're going to use our new custom devise mailer that is not default because we changed the initializer. We have to restart the server. And we can also open up just like Rails console here and say that we want to use device mailer dot confirmation instructions to user dot first. And we want to send maybe the token is token and no options. And we want to say dot deliver now. And you'll see the output of the email that was created. So here we can confirm that welcome Jenny Rosen was actually used instead. That's great. And then you can see here how this token is being passed through. So the second argument to confirmation instructions is the token that is used in the query string parameter for the confirmation URL. That's all being handled for us by device. So a couple different things we overrode. First was like collecting the name and second was making sure that the email that is being sent to users includes their name instead of their email in the welcome message. Let's go through the flow. Oh, one other thing that I like to change inside of the device and initializer is instead of using the delete HTTP method for sign out, at least when I'm in development, I like to use the get HTTP verb. And that's because it makes it convenient. So I don't actually have to add any buttons to the page to sign out. Now, if we go to user slash sign out, we are signed out successfully. Okay. So that is fantastic. So we are up and running. We've got like login, log out, 
we're able to authenticate and we have users in the database. Let's take a look back at our plan. That means that we can check off this feature. I guess the next step would be to create a brand new newsletter. So in the next episode, we'll go through that process. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.